So basically, you know, what the purpose of tonight is for me, um, and this is I've been now going to every neighborhood association in uh, downtown. This is the, the fifth one that I've been at, or the sixth if you count Holy Rosary. Um, you know, there's just a ton of information about the reval that I think is just very, very important for me uh, to get at. Um, these meetings weren't planned. Uh, when I came in in January, I sat down with the city and, and sort of talked through what the community outreach plan was, and, and none of this was planned. So I thought it was just incredibly important for me to go out um, and speak to you guys and get this information out. I'm going to go through this presentation. Um, at the end of the presentation, um, we'll then have a Q&A, and all of us will be able to answer your questions, and I'm sure there'll be a mix of some technical questions, uh, as well as you know some more policy and political <coughs> questions, which we're happy to address. The information I prepared this presentation, uh, this was not either the city or appraisal systems, the company that's doing the reval. Um, what are sort of the goals of the presentation from my end? Um, I want to clearly describe the reval process so everyone knows exactly what's happening and where we are. Um, I want to provide actionable information for you, especially in the short term, as you guys are facing potential appeals uh, you may be considering. So I want to make sure there's actionable information for you. Um, I want to answer your questions, and if I can answer them today, make sure I know what they are so I can answer them going forward, um, and then serve as an advocate uh, for your interests in um, City Hall. I want to be clear about what a revaluation is so that we're all on the same page. Uh, a revaluation is when the city looks at every single property, every single lot across the city, right? And it assigns them a mark, or an assessed value, and that assessed value is trying to match what's called the market value. What would that property sell for on the open market? And the city is doing that for every property across the city. Um, try to get that assessed value, and that's assessed value as of October 1st, 2017. I know there have been some questions about that, that that date is sort of fixed in time. Okay, great. Um, and then match that assessed value to the market value. Clear up a misconception. Um, it's one that I had because when I see my tax bill shoot through the roof, my assumption is it means the city is getting more tax revenue. Um, that is actually not happening. What's happening is that the revenue is getting redistributed across the city on the basis of the value of people's properties. Um, so some people are going up, some are staying the same, and many people are going down. So the city is not getting a kind of windfall in revenue out of this process. That's the basics of the reval. The next thing is many of you have gotten a letter in the mail that has an assessed value. How did the appraisal company come up with that number? So it's a two-part process. The first is called an improvement analysis, where they're looking at your building. Right? The second is, and I'll say more about that in a second, the second piece that they're looking at is the value of the land. And what's important to understand, because there have been some questions on this, is they're using a mathematical formula to come up with the value of the land. They're not doing it based on some direct sales costs, right? some sales comparisons. The house next to me sold for X, the house next to me sold for Y. And so you may find right, that the overall value of your home is off based on your neighbor's homes or things like that. Um, and that's going to be important to know when we think about the appeals. So moving to the next slide, this improvement analysis. They're coming up with what is the value of that structure of the home. And there is like kind of a formula that they're using. And what I wanted to do is when I sat down with, with the folks at City Hall was kind of give you a little bit of insight into that formula. So you in the appeals process can potentially better advocate for yourself if you feel like you've been over -assessed. So what are some of the key things, key metrics that they're looking at? The first is square footage. Right? They're not actually looking at the number of bedrooms that you have, although that does show up on your property card. They're over looking at the square footage of your home. And they're calculating that actually looking at the exterior width of the home and then using satellite imagery. But the square footage is really important. So if your square footage is off, if they say you have more square footage than you really do, you're going to want to know that. They're going to look at the interior and exterior condition of your home. They're going to look at something called the building class. Now the building class is a very technical appraisal term, but I put it up here because I think you should know that, that that building class actually makes a difference in how valuable they're saying your home is worth. And when you sit down at this informal appeal we'll talk about in a second, you may want to ask, what is my building class? Okay. How did you come up with that? Is that the right determination? They're going to look at the bathrooms and kitchens, the number and quality of them, look at your basements and your attics and whether they're finished or not, heating and cooling systems, they'll look at flooding um, based on FEMA maps. And if you are in a FEMA flood zone and uh, you, know, you do pay flood insurance, make sure when you sit down in your informal appeal that you ask 
that that's been included uh, because that's not going to show up on the property part, which I'm going to mention in a second. All of this information is mentioned on that thing called the property card. Um, it includes, or most of it, excuse me, it includes the square footage, the number of kitchens and bathrooms, the quality. All right. You can review that property card with appraisal system. So if you move one forward, you'll see an example of a property card. Um, you're not going to be able to you know, look at this one here. The thing I guess I want you to take away is the property card is a pretty technical document. You're not going to look at it and immediately understand all the different pieces. So you're going to want to review that with appraisal systems uh, when they're going through. And again, go through those list of key metrics. What was the square footage, number of kitchens, number of bathrooms, to make sure that what they've said is accurate about your home. So moving forward. All righty. So this presentation is mostly for home and condo owners, but I did briefly want to mention things for either renters or landlords. Uh, this is the simple version of it. It is not the longer, more complex version. So. Um, for buildings with more than four units of housing, or buildings with a commercial space, that property is assessed in a different formula than the one I'm going through tonight. And it's based on income, and you should have received an income statement. You know, to understand the details of that formula, you're going to want to reach out to appraisal systems and have those questions answered. If you're a renter who's in a building that is not rent controlled, um, you're going to, it's, it's a little technical, so basically uh, the landlord is allowed to increase the rent, they're not allowed to increase it at an unconscionable amount. Um, what that means is, you know, different lawyers have said different things, right? Um, so if you're in that situation, you're going to want to speak to somebody who can give you more information. You can feel free to reach out to my office. But again, that's the basics for you to know if you're on either side of that coin. Um, so moving forward, um, senior freeze program. Um, again, these are the basics. I will reach out to you one-on-one -on -one, um, to give you more details on this. So first of all, this is a New Jersey program, not a Jersey City program. And the basic idea um, of it is that it pays the difference in property taxes from the year you qualify. Marie, would you mind scooting over a little bit? I'm sorry. Right. Uh, so, the advocate. Okay. Thank you. So what it basically does, right, is it gives the gap. So if you qualify, it says, hey, my property taxes in 2015 were 4000 in 2016, they're 4,500. The state will reimburse you that difference. Now, there's no limit on how much that reimbursement can go. So the size of the check can be the difference between your taxes today and um, after the rebalance. There are a few issues, though. There's a gap between when those taxes are due and when the state will actually send you the check. I am working on some potential solutions to that gap, but I want to be clear that it exists. Um, Basic program eligibility, and again, these are the basics. I'm happy to go one-on-one -on -one and give you more information. You have to be over 65 as of December 31st, 2017. Have to have a combined marital income below. I'm saying 70K. The state only funds it to a certain amount. Last year, they only funded it to 70K. Um, technically, you can qualify if you're up to 87K, but if there's no money, they don't qualify you. So I don't want to give you false expectations. Um, so last year, it was combined marital income up to 70K. And most everything you might think about counts as income, but there is the very long list that goes through what does and doesn't count. You have to live in your home for four years, live in New Jersey for 10, and be current on your property taxes. This application is not due um, until the summer. Do I move forward? So what is the timeline? We kind of covered the basics of the reval, basics of some programs, and then that appraised value number. What's happening now? Right now, in February 18, you're getting the notification of value. And I just briefly, Mark, want to ask you guys, I know there's been questions, when do you guys anticipate if people haven't gotten their letters, they will get those notification of value? Certainly numbers? within the next couple of weeks. Okay. So, and, and there's some deadlines that have changed because of that, which I'll go over. We're in that process now. Next, February, March, and next we're going to add April, is what's called the informal appeals process. I'll explain what that is. Then, because of this due deadline, it'll actually be June. But June 2018, your formal appeal deadline will occur. And then in July or thereabouts, the formal tax book will come out. So now I'm going to go through each of these four and just give you a little bit more information. So notification of value. This is the letter that's come in the mail that says, this is what we believe your new value of your home is. Many of you have received it. I know some of you have not. Um, it contains that new assessed value. We think your home is now worth $500,000 on the open market. 
It'll show you what it used to be assessed in. It'll have an estimate of 2018 taxes. We'll talk about why it's an estimate in a little bit. Uh, but most important, it'll have instructions for getting your property card, that document with all the information about how they've assessed your home, um, as well as instructions on how to set up that informal appeal um, to get that property card. And I recommend that everybody get it. Um, you email appraisal assistant at Jersey City at ASINJ.com, and you say, this is my name, this is the property I'm at, please send me your property, my property card. Right? To set up the informal appeal, we'll talk about in a quick second, but basically you can email them here, you can call them, or there's an online system. So that's what the letter looks like if you haven't received it yet, so that's what you should be looking for in the mail. Next one here. All right, so this is the informal appeal. That's what's happening now, and it'll continue in through the middle of April now, so a new date, the middle of April. What is it? It's a one-on-one -on -one meeting to discuss your assessment. You have the ability to sit down with appraisal systems. You can understand it. Okay, how did you rate the quality of my kitchens and bathrooms? You say my bathroom is rated, you know, modern, but I haven't updated it in 50 years. Okay. You can also advocate on your behalf, right? You can come in with some sales comparisons and say, hey, house down the street sold for 20% less than you say mine is worth. We're basically the same house. How far back can you go with the sale? So they generally are looking at October 1st, 2017 to October 1st, 2016. You know, the, the, the lines are not as firm there, but that's the general time frame, that last year. October 1st, 17, October 1st, 16. And I have put this online, and I'm happy to email anybody. My email is in this presentation. But there are some real estate agents that have offered to do free sales comparisons for anyone who would like. Um, so you're able to, to call them or, or email them and get those. Yeah. Um, Really, I do view this as a chance to make a case for yourself. And appraisal systems has an incentive to work with you here. Because what their contract says is they have to defend their assessments in the formal appeals process coming up. But they don't actually get any extra money. So they would rather deal with all these issues in the informal appeal than go to that formal appeal. So they really do have a, a, an incentive to work with you in this informal appeal. And so I, I would recommend getting your property card, um, and setting up the informal appeal for most folks. A um, couple just quick notes. What if I was an inspector? How does that help the informal appeal? The appraisers never went into my house. To do the informal appeal, they are going to ask to come into your house and do that assessment. Um, so that's why it's important to look at that property card first and make sure the information is accurate, right? But you may look at that property card, you may look at your assessment, and you may say, hey, it was fair. And in that case, you might not want to do the informal appeal. So remember, advocate on your behalf, um, but if you do want to do the informal appeal, you are going to want to have your house inspected. Um, and then just briefly, if they didn't inspect the house, what do they do? Uh, Mark can say more about this in a minute, but the short version is they estimate that your house is, is nicer, right? That they couldn't get in because it was nicer. Um, and so the estimate is that it's a nicer version. Now, you know, for many of you, I know that's not the case, uh, which is, again, why it's so important that you get that property card and make sure the information is accurate on it. So how to prepare for the informal appeal, this is what I just said, just repeating myself, but check that improvement analysis, check that property card, make sure the data is right, and then check that overall assessed value. Right? Is that overall assessed value accurate? Did a house down the street that's similar sell for less? Did they get the number right? Some of you have many more unique properties, and you may want to come in with information about those. Um, last on that point, there is an Excel uh, of um, sales information that's on the appraisal system's website. Uh, so you can look at that by neighborhood, and again, you can reach out to these realtors. We're happy to give you a you know sales comparison for free um, if you reach out to them. So, what is this formal appeal? Let's say you go through the informal appeal and you feel like it, it's still not fair. They still have assessed me too high. What do you do? You have the ability to do a formal appeal. What is this? Just briefly, it's a formal legal process for which you go before uh, the Hudson County Tax Board. Um, Again, because it's a formal legal process, there's you know things that have to be done. The informal appeal is a conversation. There's no formal things you have to do other than set it up and show up. Uh, this there are you know documents and timelines that have to be met. Particularly, it's a strict 45-day deadline um, once the final numbers are submitted. It sounds like our new date is around April 15th for our final numbers, which would make uh, the appeals date around uh, June 1st. But when we have that number set or that date set, we will let you know. Um, you can only appeal assessments, not taxes. 
So you can't come in and say my taxes are too high, but you come in and you say the assessment of my property is too high. The value they've assigned to it is too high. Right? Now here's the thing, right? In a formal appeal, you can go up or you can go down. Right? So this is why it's very important to speak to a lawyer or at least you know you feel like you're going in informed. Right? You don't want to walk in just doing it because it's a shot in the dark. Uh, you want to make sure you know your facts before you go in. Um, again, there's a list of lawyers. I have them online. I'm happy to you know, print them out and deliver it to anybody uh, who can give you more information. Uh, a couple other pieces of basic information. In 2018, when you're appealing in 2018, it's based on the value of your property, October 1st, 2017. And that is set in state law. You can't change it. Right? So that's the date we're looking at. All right? um, the assessment number has to be accurate. So if they're off by 5%, 10%, they are required by law to change it. In all future years, they're given some wiggle room, right? So 2019, 2020, 2021, they can be off by 10%, but now actually have to change their assessment. Um, so again, this is where the lawyer can walk you through the process and give you more information. Um, you're demonstrating your market value as of October 1st of the preceding year. That's the basis of this formula. <clears throat> so what's going on with the tax bills? That number on the notification of value Okay, is an estimate. And that estimate will be final when the city, the county, and the state all set their final tax bills. And we do. So, the question was could it go higher? Uh, when we get to the QA, all of us can speak to that. I think it was set with a little bit of wiggle room, but you have three governments that are all setting budgets, right? So you've got to be ensure that all three of us do a good job on the budget process the city, the county, and the state. Um, so that number is an estimate, it is not a final, um, and it's subject to change as we do those budgets. Um, next, if you want to go to the next slide, um, is an example, and this is an example to tell you how you're going to be asked to pay your 2018 taxes. Um, and this is information, again, I don't want to be sharing, it's, it's not good, it's not good news, um, and I am looking at every angle that we might have to potentially change uh, some of this. Um, but I think it's really important information to get out now um, because you need to be making financial decisions yesterday about this, not today. So these numbers are just done for simplicity. 2017, your tax bill is $10,000. 2018, because of the reval, it doubles, it's $20,000. Right? 2019, still $20,000. How do you actually have to make these payments and meet these bills? You are going to be asked to meet the full 2018 bill, even though you haven't for the first and second quarter has been paying at that rate. So what does that look like? I'm giving you this information so you can make decisions about it. Next slide. So this is an example of how it would look like. In 2017, you've got to pay a full $10,000. It's divided over four quarters. 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. Now I'm going to skip to 2019. Your full bill is 20,000. You're going to be asked to pay that over four quarters. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. In 2018, right, as the system currently is set up, right, it, being asked to pay that full 20000 but your first and second quarters have been based on your 2017 estimate. Right? So you've been paying 2500 in the first quarter, 2500 in the second quarter. In the third and the fourth quarters, you're going to have to, they're going to ask you to bump up to get to that full 20000 So 7500 and 7500 right? You know, this is, again, like, it's awful information. Um, I, I wanted to bring it out part of the reason doing these meetings is I feel like a lot of folks didn't know this. Um, and this is, you know, decisions that you're making, financial decisions now uh, about this kind of stuff. Obviously, this leads to a lot of questions about the budget. And during the Q&A, you know, I'm sure you will have many. Uh, but just briefly, I want to say now that the budget, just so you guys know, only 50% of your property taxes go to the city. This is a rough estimate. 25 or 26% go to the county government. 24% uh, go to the school board. Uh, the commitment that I have made is that when we get into the budget process, I will come back to every downtown neighborhood meeting, um, and I'll walk you through the budget that's been presented to the council, what are the things the council can potentially do. Um, I will also try to bring you attention to both the school and the county budgets. From, from my perspective, particularly the county budget, um, it's $550 million overall budget. Um, Jersey City's taxes have increased 20% in the last two years. Part of that's increasing property values, but part of that's an increasing budget. Um, and I don't think we spend a lot of time thinking about our county budget. So I will both be back here for the city budget um, and the county budget to make sure you guys have information about that process as it moves forward. Alrighty, so just last, my agenda on the reval, and then we'll open it up for the Q&A. Short term, next two months, and this includes February, 
um, is to get information out. Um, and that brings up an important point. What if your neighbor isn't really on the internet, and a lot of this is in, on the internet? Um, please reach out to me. Um, all these things have my contact information. My contact information is on uh, the city website. I'm happy to set up phone calls, you know, go door to door if we need to. Also language. Um, my account's laid, school in Spanish. Um, so if you have a neighbor who's primarily Spanish speaking, you know, have them call my office. I will have Laura call them and walk through all the information uh, that you might need. Um, and if there's any neighbor that just you don't think knows about this, please knock on their door, talk to them, get them the information you need. And this moving to the next slide. So medium term, what's my view is my role? Um, a couple things. We want to reform the way we're doing the reval. Um, I think that's really, really important. And I think shame on us if we go through this process and we don't fix the way we do it going forward. Um, there's a number of ideas being considered. So we should talk about that and what we can do. Explore policy changes to increase city revenue. Um, unfortunately, our hands are largely tied in many ways um, by the way the state sets things up, and we can talk more about it. Um, but there are things that have been done. An idea that I, I think is unique is a payroll tax. Uh, we require state legislation for us to implement. Uh, but NORC has it. It's $50 million in annual revenue for NORC. Those are the types of things I think we should at least be at a minimum considering. Um, again, there's a big debate about the state and local income tax deduction. Um, can you make it charitable? You know, right now, uh, you know, the mayor said that we're not pursuing that, and I think that's smart because you don't want to give people false information. You start making decisions that you have that tax deduction, but it's still our responsibility to make sure that we're on top of that, and if it does look like a better option, we move quickly to implement it. Um, subject all fiscal decisions to strict scrutiny. You know, that's my job anyway on the council, uh, but it's something I take very, very seriously, so anything that comes before us, asking a ton of questions, making sure it really is in the best interest of the city, Advocating for financial planners that you have access to. Some of you may not want that, but for some of you who do want to sit down with a financial planner and talk about every option that might be available to you, uh, I think it's the city should make that uh, available to you, so we'll advocate for that. Um, and again, in a few months, we'll go door to door to sign people up for the senior freeze. No deadline in the short term. Um, a couple ideas that have come up. What's the legal basis for this higher third and fourth quarter bills? Um, you know, I've been told from, I have had more conversations on that front. I've been told that it isn't something the city can change. It would require state legislative change. But at a minimum, I think we should talk to our state legislators about making that change. Um, adjust for money spent improving the home. Um, in 2019, if values, in 2018, if values significantly decreased because of the state and local property tax deduction, because of the rebound, what do we do? There are a number of options we can consider. We can talk about that a little bit in Q&A. People have talked about bonding for operating revenue. Um, again, uh, you know, it's not the idea that first comes to mind to me, but I will consider every idea um, that we have. Um, so last slide. So we'll open it up for the Q&A in a second, but just last, again, not, not obviously the, the topic I wanted to start being a council person addressing, um, but, you know, I do want you guys to feel free that you can call me, you can email me. Any idea you might have, any questions you might have, uh, please reach out. Um,